Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave, uh, doing some question answering. I've got some quest. You've got some questions. I've got some answers. Uh, these questions come courtesy of Tested Patrons, and this one comes from Tested Burry or Burry Barry. Uh, Tessa says, over the past year, you've redesigned and upgraded. An over the past year, you've redesigned and upgraded a number of stations in your workshop. If you were totally to strip the cave and rebuild it from the ground up, is there any major changes you would make? Okay. Let's define our terms here, Tessa. Uh, <clears throat> do you mean this cave? Because if I was going to redesign this cave, I think I've nailed it. This room, which is, <laughs> it is so small. It's like 400 square feet is the room I do all of my building in. Um, I need some more room. Hello, sweetie. Come here. Oh, noodle. Um, my dog Maggie's here. Come here. Oh. So um, I would have a quieter space for Maggie to hang out. She doesn't love it here at the shop. Um, she's with me this morning because my wife is working um, and I've taken her on her big walk this morning. You don't need to know any of this. If I was to redesign my shop, um, I, I'm really happy with how this space works for me. I, I, you know, there's still an ever, a never ending series of little things to take care of. Oh, sweetie. Oh, there you go. Come here. You can sit down there. Um, yeah, Maggie is 15 years old. She just got a super clean bill of health from the vet. She is doing great. She is mostly deaf and I think also losing her eyesight just a little bit, but she is a sweetie. Um, but Tessa, the idea of dismantling my cave and rebuilding it from scratch is very attractive to me. In fact, uh, the tested production manager, Ryan Geyser, and I are the only two people on our team not freaked out by the idea of moving my cave. Um, and it's something that I'm considering because I really do feel like I've run out of available space for the kind of projects that I've been doing. Um, and uh, if I was to move into a space, the biggest change would be size. The second biggest change, if I was, oh, yeah, you know, one of the big changes that I would make is lighting. Uh, the lighting in this space is very um, catch as catch can, like I've got lights in each station, but I, I've added them as needed. It's an imperfect system. Um, and I just, the LED light above my lathe just crapped out. You know, the issue with LED bulbs, when they say lasts for 10,000 hours, that's great. The hardware it's mounted to doesn't last that long. The power supplies often go out. Uh, sorry, that's just a side complaint. Um, <clears throat> I would love to have a much more monolithic lighting solution. I would still have individual adjustable lights at each workstation, as I currently do. But I would love to build a grid that went over the whole shop and allowed me to hang some nice bright lights in it. You, you really can't have too much lighting in a shop. Hold on just a second. Where was I? Ah, yes, lighting. Lighting is, a, lighting is the biggest change I would make if I was rebuilding this shop from scratch. Uh, and it definitely is, when I eventually move this shop, lighting will be one of the very first things I worry about. The second thing I could really use is more wall space, but I don't know how I get that. Uh, I would love to be able to pull my car in here. I would love to have a space that I could pull my car in and work on it. At this point, the Shining Maze almost crippled this shop because it's too big. So it's way, I mean, I could, there's a loading door over there and I could redesign the whole back of the shop and pull a car in, but it's just not the kind of thing I'm interested in. I don't know. Maybe I will redesign this whole space. That's, it's not out of the question. The answer, so <clears throat> Tessa, I, I appreciate your question. And the answer is that I'm constantly thinking about what I would do differently if I had to do it again uh, in terms of shop setup and layout. It is an ongoing, it, it, it's a process. It's not a, yeah, that's the thing. Where did I just see that? Uh, 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 a Buddhist teacher said, this isn't a problem to solve, it's a paradox to manage. And she was referring to life. And it is a great outlook on life. 
So the shop is never done. The shop itself is a process. It looks like it's done because at any given moment you look at it, it's not moving around, but it is constantly changing in regards to my needs, in regards to what we are doing here, in regards to the kind of projects I'm bringing in. Yeah, it is not a problem to solve. It is a process to manage. Um, the moment I heard that specific phrase, I realized how applicable it was for me across the whole swath of the way I think about stuff. And I really appreciate that, that framework in terms of an approach to something. Because when you think of something as done or not done, like the ants from Once and Future King, when you think of something as done or not done, um, you're thinking of it in static terms. And very few things are static. Yeah. Um, again, we are, <laughs> I am not a problem to solve. I am a process to manage. We are all processes, and this is just an extension of mine. Um, Tessa, I hope that answer was useful to you. Thank you for the uh, the intellectual exercise of thinking through what I would do differently. I appreciate it. Uh, if you would like to find out how to support us uh, on Tested and become a Tested patron, it's not that expensive, and there are some great perks, and there's a link in the comments below. Thank you guys so much. I'm Adam Savage in my cave, and I will see you next time.